Hey friend, in this video, I'm going to be giving you an explanation of all your problems. To in this video, I'm going to be giving you the answers to all of your floral composition problems. This is one of my most frequently asked questions is about composition, especially with the more tossed, full looking floral composition pieces. So if you are struggling with composition with your floral pieces, let's watch this video. So I have my color reference and in this lesson, we are going to be painting a floral composition piece, knowing where to paint what in your floral pieces and how to start it, how to know how much white space, all that kind of stuff. But before I dive into painting my floral piece, I'm going to talk about composition on some of these paintings that I already have done. Um, so for example, everything that I do that's a bouquet or a centerpiece, my mom was a florist, bless her soul, very talented. Uh, I don't know why I said bless her soul. She's still alive. She's definitely still alive. <laughs> She's perfectly healthy. She's perfectly healthy. Hi, Jill. Um, she was a florist, no longer as a florist for weddings and events and all of that. And so she, I would, you know, go in the garage with her a lot of the times and help her create centerpieces or bouquets. And she would teach me like, here's kind of how I want the organic tossed look for these bouquets or whatever. And it was always about S curve and C curve. That's how I came up with the S curve C curve thing for my composition. Thank you, mom. Not sure where you learned it, but it's just for naturally for people's eyes when they're looking at a bouquet, a centerpiece, uh, some sort of floral structure is to have that natural look instead of that tight ball look that you'll see in a lot of wedding bouquets, but to have that natural um, organic look is that S or C curve. So for example, this composition, our highest point is up here in the top right. Our lowest point is right here um, down on the almost opposing corner. So we're not a direct diagonal, which would look kind of strange. We're pointing down towards the middle. So people's eyes look up at this beautiful flower and then they pour here. And there's always a zigzag between elements. So we have a zigzag here between these three little buds. We have a zigzag happening with our blue agapanthus um, or lily of the Nile flower. And we're zigging zagging with all of these different leaves and whatnot. So you, as I'm painting this next floral piece, I'm gonna talk about how I place my elements, where I place what. Um, but overall, you wanna be thinking about leading people's eyes down the page in either a C curve or an S curve. Um, and that is gonna determine where you place things. So keep that in mind. You're kind of, and you never want your elements to land like in a perfect tight ball in the center. So I have my highest element here, my lowest element here and neither of them are too close to the center. So keep that in mind. All right, so I've got my color palette mixed up, showed you that in the previous lesson. I'm gonna use my size 16 brush for this and I'm gonna paint big old peony flowers because people love their peonies. And if you haven't or didn't watch the petal uh, lesson, the lesson where I teach you the basic shapes of petals, we talk about the teardrop shape petal and that is what I'm going to be using for these peonies and I'm going to mix up this really soft pink that I had in my reference photo. I'm going to use that for my peonies and then some oranges um, and red oranges we're going to use for maybe some cone flowers, yellows we'll use for some berries and accent flowers and then the, the lime greens and sagey greens or agave green we're gonna use for the leaves. So I've got my soft pink and I'm gonna start with my first peony. So I'm gonna have my first peony kind of placed right here, pointing up here. The very first thing I like to do in my floral composition pieces is take as much white space away from me as I possibly can so that I feel more confident and more eased into the piece. So if I start with just little tiny flowers here and there, they're super spread out, that doesn't really get me anywhere too fast. And so if I paint a big flower right from the get-go, I know, okay, now I can see this kind of taking shape. So I take, I paint my big flowers first. This is just like how my mom used to structure flower pieces for weddings or events. Would take her big stems first, if it was peonies, roses, whatever the bigger bulb flowers were, those first. And then we're plugging in our filigree, our leaves, our berries or whatever to create the S curve or the C curve around it. So I'm gonna start with one of the front 
teardrop shape petals of my flower first. This color is divine, truly. And each petal is gonna have a slightly different hue or value to it, value being the lightness and darkness, and then hue is obviously the color. So I'm grabbing a little bit more Opera Rose for this next petal. And maybe this petal is, this teardrop petal is a little more bumped up here. Maybe some orange. So again, teardrop shaped petals. I'm using the point of my brush pointing towards the bulb of the flower where it would be connected to the stem to make sure all of these petals are pointing back to that stem. And then I've got petals behind that are falling in. Fluffies. part of my shape and then I'm going to add another row of petals just the tops of the petals poking out back here so they're just kind of fat C curves might want to darken these middle petals to make this look a little more dense and layered Teardrop petals falling away from the center of the flower. go back in and with wet and wet kind of poke in some darker color. So there's my first peony. So already right now I know this is pointing me up. So I'm gonna curve this way. If I was over here, it was pointing that way, I would curve that way. So I'm not gonna have my high moment over here because this is just kind of leading me this way because I'm gonna, I don't know, it just feels that way, right? Gut. Gut. But I also just don't wanna create a line right here. Like this is a very big moment. So I'm just gonna have a lighter, less full moment, like some buds or leaves happening up here. But first I'm gonna do my second flower, my second peony. Let's do, I don't wanna do the same pink. I wanna do, I think what I'm gonna do now is a version of this pink, but with some more orange in it. So it's got that soft tone to it, but it's not the same super pastel light pink. So then for this moment, I'm zigging, zagging. I'm not directly beneath it or directly on top of it with this next peony. I'm off and down to the right. I don't want it to be the same size moment happening. I definitely want this to be the biggest. 
So this is going to be more of a bud. And it's falling this way, so I'm pulling towards me for these teardrops. Maybe leaving this white space right here for the stamen. I'm going to use a dry brush to soak this up right here so it doesn't create a hard line. And maybe one petal falling away right here. Like so. Now that I'm seeing this bud, I want another one right here to create that zigzag. So we're gonna do basically the same thing, but pointing this way up to this corner. There we go. There's my starting point. So I usually do about two or three of my biggest flowers first. And then I know, okay, we've got a chunk or like a triangle of white space here, chunk here, chunk here, and chunk here. Those are my curves that I have to work with, but I need to keep in mind that I'm doing a C curve or an S curve. So I'm probably not gonna put anything, if I do, it's really minimal over here because then that would extend the curve this way and we're going like this and not like this or that. So I'm gonna do minimal stuff here because I want my highest point, whoopsie, my highest point to be this direction, my lowest point to be over here. So I'm not gonna go too high over here, not gonna go too low down here. It's gonna be these corners that I'm leading people through. So next, what is just most natural in terms of where to put things and what, I usually end up going with my stems and leaves and then some filigree moments. So I've got my chartreuse color, beautiful against this peach because there's an orange undertone in this flower. And then obviously we've got a green undertone in this yellow green. So those are beautiful. Incorporating some very subtle ways of contrasting orange and blue through the green we mixed up with cobalt turquoise and this having pink in it or red and orange or orangey undertone. So I'm just going to lay down some brighter stems and leaves first. When you think about holding a bouquet of flowers, let's pretend my hand is like right here holding this. We wouldn't have a stem that's on this flower pointing this way, because that would mean that somebody's holding this flower over here. So we're pointing this this way instead of that way. So we're gonna curve like that to that flower. And maybe I have a stem of leaves coming out that way. We'll finish that off once I get more down. And then this guy we're gonna have come through here. And we'll add a pouring leaf or like a waterfall of leaves coming out this way to lead to this corner. And to ground that bright chartreuse Let's grab the agave color 
Well, it's white, actually. Let's grab that agave color that I've mixed up. Touch more cobalt. And use that for some of these stems and leaves, too. Really nice color against these softer pinks. So one of my favorite floral bits to paint with this smoky agave color is eucalyptus. And I think it's gonna look really nice with this pink color. So I'm gonna start to lead people's eyes up with an S curve of eucalyptus. So I'm gonna do this teardrop shape that I just kind of looped down to make a disc. So pressing and looping down. and then imagining where the stem of this eucalyptus is going, kind of pointing this direction and leading people up. Maybe a little more blue for these next couple ones. Just a little bit there. And then we'll start pulling people down. So referencing this eucalyptus down here as well. I'm going to pull out some darker blue. The cobalt and white gouache mixture for some Lily of the Nile almond shaped petals. So we're just going to bloop and drag and create a V shape with these almond shaped petals. So they're not all the same hue and value of almond-shaped petals. here. Zig, zag, zig, zag. Because we need to now, now you, let's think about tipping point. So this is another thing with composition. We have pretty even weight distributed from top and from these opposing corners. And so I want to bring it a little bit further down here so it's not stretched so diagonally in a perfect line. But along with that, you wanna think about tipping points. So this empty space or white space up here feels really heavy compared to how much we have down here. So it's weighted on that side. So the balance would be a little bit leaning on this top left corner versus up here. So that is just a little lesson from my photography days of how you wanna balance your images and it works for paintings as well when you're doing full floral pieces like this. And then we'll get higher with some other elements up there. Let's bring in the third, just a peak 
Not a full lily of the Nile or Agapanthus, whoopsie. Right here, maybe it's just a couple poking out and the, the rest of it is behind this flower. Let's get higher up with this one actually. And then that chartreuse color. It's falling from the center point here. Just kind of lead little stems connecting to these petals or buds, whatever. Now we need to ground this piece with color. We need it to, it feels very soft right now and our color palette has these bright red oranges. So I'm gonna come up here with this red orange. Orange and blue are contrasting colors. So just notice how this orange and red orange make that blue just kind of pop. It brings a whole new vibe. I'm just painting teardrop shapes for buds. And then I'm gonna bring in one over here. This is still our highest point on the top half of the sheet, but we want to go a little bit higher so it's not too com too much competition for the left side. Now we want to bring it down here, but not in a direct line. So I'm going to come closer to center. Now we can fill in with our canary yellow. Some of this X shape that we have going on. So we're gonna come over here in this white space, fill in this white space with some berries. So just using the side of my brush, I'm gonna just create this fluffy texture, laying down more saturated color first and then lightening it with water coming in and maybe like a little agapanthus shape where it's a taper little spear So currently I'm filling out what was creating an X shape on my paper so that it's a little bit more rounded and flowy. And we're just creating the S curve with our brighter moments on the page. So we're gonna have this yellow kind of be our gap filler. But making sure we still have gaps of white space throughout our page. I can kind of create this, like we're kind of creating a background effect with this yellow berry agapanthus look. Might go back on top of some of these yellows and add some yellow ochre to create more depth. And then we're going to, I didn't have this color in my reference photo, but this is where you just kind of let your eye direct things. So I'm grabbing sap green, I want to really add something with weight 
to balance out the bright reddish orange. So I'm grabbing sap green and a touch of lemon yellow deep. And I use this darker green color to fill in some more of these white space and just kind of frame some of these lighter flowers. Making sure to stay small over here because this is our lowest and highest points. Filling in that white space with the curved leaf that's still pointing to my highest point over here. And that's gonna be my higher leaf. And now our final touch, we can do some stamen on these peonies. Grabbing a lot of lemon yellow deep, touch of yellow ochre, and a touch of white gouache. And I'm going to add some dots up here in this white space. Still leaving some white space so it looks like, okay, that's the middle of the flower. And then up here. So again, this is a super dense piece, but you start with your main big stems. Just think of it, think of it like you're creating a centerpiece or a floral bouquet for a wedding or something. You're starting with your biggest pieces first to take up the most white space so you can really feel out the direction. But with those big piece pieces, you're keeping in mind where you want your highest point to be and your lowest point to be. And those, the highest and lowest point should be opposing Corners because again, thinking about balance and tipping point on a sheet of paper or in a photograph composition wise, you don't want it to feel weighted too heavy on the top or too heavy on the bottom. So we're opposing corners so that they're evenly weighted on the top and the bottom so that their tipping point isn't too top or bottom heavy. And we're grabbing that um, or creating balance with that with focal points like brighter colors or contrasting moments between blue and orange or any other contrasting colors that you might using in your piece, might be using in your piece. Um, and we're also leading people's eyes up in a, through that tipping point or opposing corners through zigzag or C curve. So these three peonies right here are our biggest moments and they are in a zigzag pointing up towards that tipping point in the top corner. And then we have a long stem of agapanthus and other elements down here, pulling it, people's eyes down to this corner. So think about your overall shape, S curve or C curve through those tipping points and how you're gonna lead people's eyes there. And then placing your biggest elements first and then plugging in the stems and leaves and your other filler flowers. So that was a clip from my Complete Beginner's Guide to Watercolor Flowers, which we'll link, we'll link in the description. And uh, you can check out the full video because it's very, very thorough and in-depth. Also, I have a free ebook on the Complete Beginner's Guide to Watercolor. And it covers not just flowers, but other things like supplies, techniques, other types of paintings like abstract landscapes, landscapes that aren't abstract, flowers, all the things. And we have QR codes every step of the way that link to videos that correspond with what I'm talking about inside the ebook. So make sure you check that out. It's free. All you have to do is enter your name and email and we'll 
ship it right off to your email inbox directly to you and you can download it and have a lot of fun. Also, if you wanna take your art to the next level, that is what my art community, my monthly membership is for. Um, we have two exclusive monthly tutorials every single month, obviously, because they're monthly. And um, we also have a live art class with yours truly every single month. And I'm also doing art critiques for whoever submits their art to be critiqued by me. I'm giving comments and feedback, my tips and tricks and all of that directly to your specific art. Very helpful stuff. You can cancel at any time. Make sure you go to jennarainey.com forward slash join dash community to check that out. And also my course, The Art Within is a very thorough, I've had multiple people who have graduated from art school tell me that this course is way more in depth. I learned way more from this course than I did at, at art school. Um, so if you wanna check that out, it's jennarainey.com forward slash the dash art dash within. We'll link to it below. As always, thank you so much for watching these videos, engaging with them, liking, subscribing, all of the things that maybe don't seem like a big deal to you, but they are a big deal to us and our channel and spreading the good news of watercolor. So thank you, Hertz, and I will see you in the next video.